I like to think that I'm in control of my emotions. I'm in control of how I feel and how I react to certain situations. But I find that I have, I think I have less control than I like to think. <clears throat> uh, what do I mean by this? I think a lot of times when someone speaks cross words at me, toward me, I'm more likely to reply crossly. When someone is happy or, or kind toward me, I'm more likely to reply with kindness and gentleness. Um, I've noticed this. For example, there's a very <laughs> ambitious young man who, who I'm friends with that uh, is very angered by some of the things I post online. And, uh, and he personally feels it his duty to, to correct me and tell me where I'm wrong and tell me what I'm doing that's evil and what I'm saying that's bad and, and things like that. And, uh, and a lot of the conversations we have are rather heated and uh, angry. Um, and, and I, yeah, and I noticed it's very easy for me to, to reply to him angrily because he speaks to me angrily. I've also noticed some people um, speak to me with with kindness and gentleness and it's much easier for me to respond to them with gentleness and in fact it's in fact I find it very difficult even when I want to even when they say something that I think is wrong or that I disagree with or that something that might anger me because they're speaking gently because they're kind about it um, I, I find it virtually impossible for me to, to be angered. Um, I'd like to read one example. Um, I, I posted just anecdotally how sometimes I'll notice somebody that I haven't connected in with for a while will add me on Facebook and then shortly, maybe a day or two later, will unfriend me. And, and I, I conclude it's because something about my life now that's different than what they knew before that they find disturbing. Maybe it's the fact that I'm gay. Maybe it's the fact that I'm an atheist. Who knows? But whatever it is, it happens. And, and I just found it to be interesting. Um, but I noticed I, I did get a lot of sympathy from people on the matter. And one of the comments um, was, it was very touching, even though it was just a normal comment. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's from a it's from a good friend that I've been friends with for many years, and she said, "I'm sorry, Keith. I'm Mormon, and I think you're great." And then she said, "You can tell I'm a Tony the Tiger fan." Anyway, um, that made me smile. I was I was glad that she said that, but the reason it was so touching is because I remember um, before before I ever came out, I was. We were sitting down talking to her one time, and a mutual friend of ours had come out of the closet, and uh, and she she voiced her concern that this that this man would uh, would start being really bitter and and saying mean things about the church and, and things like that, um, <clears throat> because she had noticed it with other I suppose with other uh, gay people that had come out uh, and that that they would that they would be perhaps uh, unfavorable toward the church. And she was afraid of this. And, and of course I assured her, I'm like, well, no, I, I know, I know him and, and he won't, he won't do that. He's a, he's a really sweet guy. And she's like, yeah, well, a lot of, a lot of people are really sweet guys. And then they, then they come out of the closet and, and they're not so sweet anymore. Um, so I remember this conversation and, and this conversation would pop up in my mind a, a lot, actually, a lot of times, um, when I would post something, uh, something about Mormonism or something about <clears throat> um, how homosexual people are treated or something to that effect. Um, 
And in fact, sometimes uh, conversations like that and, and similar ones that I had with other people would actually prevent me from posting something. And, and other times it might, um, might make me word things more diplomatically than I was originally planning to word them. But at any rate, it was always in my mind, and I noticed that um, the amount of interaction between us on Facebook decreased between me and this, this lady um, from the time that I came out. And, and I was always worried. I was always worried that, um, that I had offended her and that, and that I was just one of those other um, people that, that was sweet and nice and then came out of the closet and became angry and bitter. Um, I always worried about that. Um, and of course I was, I was always self-conscious about um, contacting her. I didn't want to um, didn't want to contact her if, if she wasn't comfortable with with me and how I was um, presenting myself. Um, so so when she wrote that on my wall, I was uh, I was very pleased actually to to hear from her and to hear that um, that she still thinks I'm great. <laughs> um, that that felt good and it also it also motivated me to to be more mm, kind more gentle toward uh, toward Mormons and toward the Mormon church I I hope I haven't ever been cruel toward Mormons themselves I've tried very very I've tried very hard to um, to keep the things that I say to Mormons and about Mormons uh, very uh, upbeat and optimistic because virtually all the Mormons that I know are, are nice people and I'd like to um, maintain that, uh, that image that I have that they really are nice people. Um, most of the ones I know. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose I've said some things about the church itself that were a bit harsh, that were a bit cruel, and um, it's made me, that comment and comments like that uh, make me want to, um, make me want to be more thoughtful and to um, consider more carefully the things that I post online. Um, so, so comments like that actually go a long way with me. Um, and, the, and the thing is, I really do care deeply about people. Um, I got an email from my sister saying that many of the things that I post online she finds to be offensive. And, and that actually hurt a lot. It hurt um, not because she said it, not because I thought she was unfeeling for having said something like that to me, but because just just thinking that I had hurt her or had offended her by things that I had said um, and that hurts because because I care about her I love her she's my sister and and I don't I don't mean to offend her I don't want to offend her or or anyone else really I don't try to go out of my way to offend people um, so so comments to that and really go really far with me um, but I, today, um, a wonderful thing happened. I've, I've realized that I'm not completely reactionary. I am capable of, um, sometimes, of, of pausing, taking a step back and reacting to a situation, um, reacting to anger in specific, in a way other than by reacting with anger. And I'd like to, uh, <laughs> like to specify what I mean. So on one of my YouTube videos, uh, a person commented, and part of the comment says, you took Conrad away from people who truly cared about him. 
You are wrong for taking advantage of such a twisted, fragile, demented creature. You are a foul, wretched existence. Forever may you writhe in the treacherous pit you have so maniacally created. <laughs> and, uh, and I just had to laugh. I just had to laugh. I, I, and Conrad aptly pointed out that the foul, wretched existence, forever may you writhe in the treacherous pit, that definitely sounds like something that a supervillain would say on, on a movie. <laughs> it really does. And, uh, and, I, and I thought it was um, humorous. He, he seems to be claiming to be someone that cares for Conrad, and in the same sentence, calling Conrad a twisted, fragile, demented creature. Talk about a disconnect. <laughs> Cognitive dissonance exploding, just boom. Um, and uh, and that's I don't have any desire to respond with anger and to tell him you know you're such a horrible person for saying this I, I'm, I did respond I said uh, well uh, I'm going to leave this comment up here so that people can see just how cruel <laughs> anti-gay people are um, so, there it is, uh, for anybody that wants to read it. But uh, I, I think I can take pride in the fact that I responded well to that situation. I didn't feel any need to get back at him, to get revenge, to return hate for hate. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very glad, I'm very glad of that. Uh, I, I do feel bad for people that have that much anger and that much hatred built up inside of them. I, I figure something, something really intense, something really painful must have happened in their life to make them that bitter and that angry, that hateful. And, and I know that uh, really, really bad things happen in life. And and I hope that um, I hope that when that does happen, when when terrible things happen in a person's life, that they'll be able to get the support that they need, and the help that they need to overcome that, and to put that behind them. Um, I can I can honestly say anything that has happened to me, any of the hateful words that people have said to me, um, the homophobic things that people have said. I, I've put that behind me. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. I don't hold any ill will toward anyone. Um, I'm capable of being friends with, with someone, um, not someone who is currently and actively, continually saying such things. I think it's safe for me to distance myself from that and not put myself in the trajectory of such hateful words. But somebody who did say something like that in the past, but has since felt remorse for it, has no desire to continue to hurt me like that, there's no reason why I should uh, <clears throat> hold a grudge. So that's my one victory. Um, and, and, it, and it feels good, but I also, I also think it's important to remember that, uh, I do have a tendency to react to a situation, uh, impulsively and to react with a similar emotion to the one that I'm faced with. And, uh, that's something for me to keep in mind and something that I, I can work on. And, uh, instead of returning anger for anger, I can return uh, peace for anger and uh, anyway that's one of my goals